What you are looking at is Glacier's Orb, a behemoth of a prison constructed by Creovite, an OG in the prison community. As you may notice, the entire thing is constructed within an enormous icy sphere. This new design of prison intrigued me, not only because of its unique exterior, but because of its sleek and secure interior. Creovite wasn't messing around when he constructed this new prison, so neither will I. And if it's your first time here, subscribing helps this channel out a lot. You don't have to if you don't want to, I just thought I'd ask. But for this prison, I'm going to be putting a few restrictions on myself to make this escape harder. I'm not allowed to smuggle in any items from outside of the prison, and I'm going to set the world spawn to inside of the cell. With these rules, this is by far the hardest prison that I've ever had to escape. So let me show you what lies beneath the surface of this glacier. Inside of this thing, Everything is lined with netherite blocks and filled with water. There are 3,000 Elder Guardians, which gives you Mining Fatigue 3, and the guards are constantly equipped with the most OP gear. If they die, they respawn at an armor equip station. Between the main workings of the prison and the shell of the glacier are thousands of blocks of obsidian and then lava. Needless to say, it would take a few months to punch your way out with just your fist. And the guard chambers are even more OP. Anytime the guards want, they can activate an enderpearl stasis chamber that will teleport a guard immediately to them wherever they are, and then they will kill the guard to clean their inventory and then equip them with a fresh set of OP items and gear. Creovite truly made the most inescapable prison yet. It is very ingenious, the methods that he used to create such a structure. But to actually get inside of this prison, you must do the following. You first walk up the spiral staircase around the base of the entrance, and then you enter the portal at the top. Once you're through, you go through it once again in the nether to get inside of the prison and then you're in this giant lobby. And Creovite took Glacier to a whole new level, because everything is underwater. There is a conduit so that you don't drown, but they can be turned off at any time if the guards think that you need to be killed. Then you set your spawn by tapping on this bed, and go into this little nook, where you get killed by lava and respawn in the next area. There are long, winding hallways that you must swim down, and going parallel to them are the guard hallways. Here is where the guards will look at you and also have the controls for the kill checks and other things. You go over to this honey block machine and stand on the front block, and then you get flown through a lava tunnel. Then you go to the second kill check, which is pretty much the same as the first one. You set your spawn, get killed by lava, and then get teleported to the next hallway. And in this one you come face to face with a 7x7 netherite vault door. You go through, and then you go through another kill check, swim down one more tunnel, set your spawn at this bed, and then you'll swim up a door in the ceiling to set your spawn one last time at the bed trap, and you'll respawn in the cell once you wake up. But if it's daytime, then you can go into this nook to get killed, and then you'll respawn inside that way. And that brings us to the cell. The cell was something that I've never seen before in a prison. Most prisons are getting predictable, using a regenerating wall and some water, but this one is completely different. You're on a three block wide platform of obsidian, floating above cascading lava. The only way out is through the visitor entrance tunnel, but it's far too high and out of reach for you to be able to get to it, even if you had jump boost too. And if you think that you can swim through the lava somewhere with the lava invincibility glitch, then think again, because there's nothing on the other side of the lava except for dozens of layers of obsidian and death. Once you go into the lava, there's no way to get back without dying. And speaking of dying, every time you die, you respawn in the ceiling in an obsidian encased box on top of an iron trapdoor. These two boxes are too high for you to reach, and also, even if you manage to reach an obsidian or a netherite block, the Mining Fatigue 3 makes it so that it would take an entire day to break one block with just your fist. There's nothing you can do in this prison. There's nothing you can reach. There's no way to get out. The only way back to the portal is through endless blocks of netherite, and in plain sight of the guards. 
Is this truly the prison that cannot be escaped alone? Oh, come now. You haven't lost faith in me that quickly, have you? There they go again, Shiratori. This is getting out of hand. But this time we have caught them before it's finished, giving us enough time to prepare. I'm gonna take you somewhere safe. Listen, I'm not going to be with you for a few more days, okay? These people are going to try and come and get me. I'll try and evade capture as long as I can. But you're just going to have to hang in there until I figure something out, alright? I'm going to go now. I knew this day would come, just not so soon. I thought I could at least get out of their sight, but apparently these prison builders work fast. Now to be clear with everyone, this version of the prison is version 2, which had a lot of exploitable functions patched, and it is harder to escape. Also, I'm actually going to set the world spawn inside of the cell, so that if I obstruct or destroy the bed and die, I'll still respawn inside the cell. But this wouldn't ever work in a normal survival world, because if the prison was built at the actual spawn point, then the prisoner wouldn't spawn on one of the three blocks. They would spawn in a 20 block radius randomly, and they wouldn't even spawn in the cell, they would spawn above the cell, on top of the prison because Minecraft will only spawn you on top of anything that's within the spawn radius. But just to make it harder on me, I'm going to actually use commands to set my spawn on this platform. The first thing that I'm going to do in this escape plan is exactly what the guards tell me to. I always like to exploit the flaws in the guard force, so to do that, I need to make them think that they have the upper hand. And part of doing that is being as cooperative as possible. I go through every kill check, every tunnel, and every door, all up until I get to this part in the hallway. Here lies the exposed bed for the visitor. I break the bed, and then make sure to hotkey to my second slot so that nobody sees me take it. This is perfect. This is all I need. But wait a moment, Mithridak. How could you break it? You have Mining Fatigue 3 and your head is underwater. Wouldn't it take around 9 minutes to break it? The guards would definitely notice you standing there when breaking it. Well yes, that is a very good observation. Bravo. But actually, I can break it the same time that a normal person would take to break it. Because I don't have Mining Fatigue. You see, there's a critical flaw in this prison. There are 3,000 Elder Guardians that are supposed to be giving you Mining Fatigue 3 hundreds of times per second. But actually, what I've found out is that there are so many Elder Guardians that it it causes the world to lag. It lags the world so bad that it doesn't give you mining fatigue for a few minutes. And this hasn't happened just to me, but other people have noticed the exact same thing. And this is just single player. Think about what it would be like on a server. But even so, when I'm captured, I'm gonna make sure that I'm playing on my old crappy laptop because that will perpetuate the lag more. And even if I got mining fatigue before I got to the bed, in the new update, Kriavai added another kill check right before the bed, and dying clears you of any effect, therefore resetting the entire thing. But Mithridak, when you break the bed, wouldn't the guards see that the bed was missing after you swam away from it? Another good observation, however, let me bring your attention to the second biggest flaw in this prison. If I come here to this side of the glass, where the guards are at, you can barely even see anything in the hallway. Here. Here is the place where the bed is supposed to be. Now take a guess if it's there or not. The answer is that it's actually there, and regardless of whether you guessed right, you cannot deny that it is nearly impossible to see the bed, let alone if the prisoner breaks it. Now with a bed in my inventory, I swim up to the second prisoner chamber and set my spawn at the last bed. I'm going to assume that the guards are smart, so they decided to capture me in the daytime. This means that I need to get killed to get inside the cell, therefore ensuring that I have no items on me. But this is just what I needed. You see, I want to keep the guards as certain as possible that I brought nothing in, and reassuring them with one last kill check should do the trick just as well. So what I do is throw the bed in the small crack right here, and then let them kill me with lava. Then when I respawn, I will automatically pick up the bed from the other side of the wall, and then drop down into the cell. Now if this were an actual survival world, I would just place the bed down, right click it, and then break it and jump into the lava, and then I would escape like that. But if we are under the presumption that a server admin set the world spawn here with commands, then I'm going to have to escape another way. 
And this is where the fun begins. You see, the prison builders may think that they have the upper hand. They may have thousands of blocks of netherite, obsidian, and lava, thousands of elder guardians, and unlimited OP gear, apparently, which, in reality, all of these things would be pretty impossible to get. But their security measures have trapped themselves more than it has trapped me. Because in the new update of the prison, Creovite removed the guard's method of looking at the prisoner, because someone had used it to escape. But this means that the guard can't look at what I'm doing. The only thing that they can see is my name tag. But if I crouch, then that problem will be fixed. The only way that I can imagine the guards looking at me is if they mined two pieces of glass and then purled through the window, or went through the entire kill checking system and having all of their items removed just to come into the right hallway. So needless to say, I don't think the guards will be too eager to look at us. Plus, what have they got to be worried about? They saw me die multiple times right in front of their eyes with nothing on me. I should have no way to escape. Oh how little they know. You see, for this escape I'm going to have to think outside of the box, or should I say, outside of the orb. You see, even if the builders had all of the items and elder guardians at their disposal to build this prison, it would take weeks if not months, and I'm not waiting around to get captured again. This next part is completely optional to the plan, but it will make the entire thing a lot faster. What I do is tunnel down to somewhere near bedrock, and then make a beacon. I'll try to make it as unnoticeable as possible, such as making it 50 blocks away from the prison cell, coloring the beam to blue or black, and then making it when the builders are working so that they think it will help them build easier. But what I will do is make a piston door for the beam that will be powered by a daylight detector. Not only will this beacon give me haste too and regeneration, but it will also tell me when it's day and night, because at night it will activate and I will see the effect appear. When I do get the effect, and it has been an adequate amount of time to satisfy the guards, then I move. I leap off the platform and place the bed in this corner. I'm going to die, but that's fine. I'll respawn right back on the platform. Now the bed is over there. Then I'm going to jump off again and spam my right click. I will sleep in the bed and then once I wake up, I'll be on top of it. Now since I died, I don't have any mining fatigue any longer, and mining obsidian with your fist takes 250 seconds. Plus haste 2 will make it even faster. So I'll be able to break the piece of obsidian in time before the mining fatigue comes back. But even if it does come back sooner than that, I have a significant amount of the obsidian mined and it will take much less time to get the rest of it broken. Then I'm going to jump back into the lava and then do the exact same thing, except for I'll break the obsidian above the one I just broke. Then I'm going to die once again. This time I'm going to stand right at the edge of this obsidian block and break the bed. There is a chance that you won't pick up the bed when you do this and it'll be burnt in the lava, but it's a risk I'm willing to take to ensure my freedom. Now there's something that you may notice about this place that I just dug out. There's a line of redstone. And even though it is one block tall and encased in obsidian, I can still use it to my advantage. You see, this redstone line goes two directions. One goes to a conduit, and the other goes straight inside the vault door. All I need to figure out is how to get in there. So this next part is a bit confusing, but I'm going to place the bed right here. It's close enough to the ceiling ledge not to obstruct the bed, then I use my parkour practice and jump out of the hole I made right at the edge, and then right click the bed. When I respawn, I'll be compressed into the swimming position, but as soon as I wake up, I need to break this block, and then this block. Then I crouch so I can maneuver my way onto the steps. I then need to break any blocks that will shape the water correctly, and then this blackstone slab, so that the water will flow down. Either way, as soon as the water pours down, I swim in it and then break the bed once again. Then I place and break the bed over and over again until the water is right here, against the hole. All I do now is use the water to get into the swimming position, and then I crawl into the vents. I need to crawl through the vents quickly, because I can't crouch when I'm in the swimming position, meaning that if the guard sees my name tag, this whole operation could be ruined. Now we're here. I break the sea lanterns, but right now we're stuck here. So what I'm going to do is immediately break this obsidian. With haste 2, it should only take around 2 minutes. And then I place the bed here, sleep in it, and then I can crawl through the opening into the vault door. And here is a whole host of resources that I can use for my escape. It's more than enough. But what I must do is immediately get all of the pistons, sticky pistons, and redstone torches. You really only need a few redstone torches and pistons, but I'm gonna get everything I can. Now I need to get back into the vent and crawl back as soon as possible. But getting back down into the vent is going to be kind of tricky. We don't have any water, so what I'm going to do is place the piston here and then a redstone torch here. This will push me down into the swimming position. Then I go into this step, and then I place the pistons and the redstone torches to push me down further. Then I quickly go back down to the vent and inside the main cell. 
And this is the most important and dangerous part of the whole escape, so I need to be perfect. I swim up the water and into the tunnel. Hopefully there aren't any guards there, but even if there are, they still have Mining Fatigue 3, so it will take them 5 minutes to break through 2 blocks of glass and pearl through. That gives me plenty of time. I put the piston here, and then put the redstone torch behind it. This will extend and then grab the netherite block, but since the water destroys the redstone torch pretty quickly, it will retract and then take the block with it. I then swim inside the visitor portal room, and now I have to work fast. The guards will be here any moment. The trouble is with this portal, because yes, I can take out the flint and steel and bucket, and pick up the water, light it, and go through. But then I'd be stuck in the nether box, because the nether hub is actually in a tiny portal room, which is in inside an enormous obsidian sphere that would take way too long to mine. And if I try to come back through, I'll end up back in the room. So instead, I'm going to use the guard's own security system against them. I put the water back into the dispenser, and then take out all the flint and steel. Then I crouch and place this piston facing this block, and then put a redstone torch next to it. The piston will then push the netherite block, destroying the redstone behind it. Then I break the piston, and then the redstone torch. I then light the portal and look directly at this block. And right before I teleport, I place down a redstone torch. Once I'm through, I enter again. It worked. I'm outside the prison. That was close, but hopefully the guard will take a few minutes to realize what, 